Hello everybody, how's it going? This is Void here, coming back at you all with another Dak Tech video. I know we've been a little controversial the past few days, more like the past week, talking about Secret Lair of the Walking Dead. And to be honest, I've had my fun trolling people. <laughs> Got a lot of people upset about that. <laughs> It was so much fun. I want to do more of them, but I, I'm afraid of losing too many subs. But uh, I might get around to doing the Daryl one, because I like the whole Thornbite staff combo. But we're going to do Cherex the Raging Isle. Getting back to Zendikar Rising, this is actually a pretty underrated commander option, because blue doesn't really have a lot of these win with commander damage options. I mean, you of course can win with commander damage in any kind of blue deck, so long as you're able to give your commander enough power, swing consistently. It's possible with just about every commander in the game. But with Cherix the Raging Isle, we have something that's actually pretty powerful. 4 mana Leviathan Crab, 0, 17. So a whopping 17 toughness. So if you're not going on the offensive, feel free to just sit back and block pretty much everything. So long as you don't have to block any flyers, you should be okay. Spells your opponent's cast at target, Cherex the Raging Isle costs two more to cast, which is always nice. I love this about blue. Doesn't prevent your opponents from interacting with Cherex, but it's going to make it a little bit harder. Best part about Cherex, though, is the second ability, where you pay three mana. Cherex will get plus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of islands you control. This might sound like a guarantee for commander damage, your first couple swings, but you do have to build up your islands, so we are going to focus on ramp. Although, this isn't going to be a purely commander damage deck. This is going to be kind of janky. I want it to be fun for people to build, so we're going to go for Crab Tribal instead of just Mono Blue Voltron, because I feel like Mono Blue Voltron with nothing but a bunch of equipment would be a little bit boring. We're doing Crab Tribal, so to get the boring stuff out of the way, the lands, we have Castle Vantress. Always nice if you have nothing else to do to scry to and set up your next turn. Cavern of Souls is perfect because we don't want a commander option that can help us win the game to be countered. So just choose crabs and you can pretty much make whatever crab you play uncounterable, which Cherex is the only one that's probably in danger of getting countered. Myriad Landscape, just to get more islands. Nykthos Shrine to Nyx for more mana in a monocolored deck. You can't really beat this. Path of Ancestry lets us scry. And Rogue's Passage, probably the most important land because we can make our Cherex unblockable. And then we have... 31 snow-covered islands, and that is important for one crab in the deck. Other than that, you could just go for regular islands. We do play a decent amount of ramp here. We have Arcane Signet, Burnished Heart to get more lands. We have Heraldic Banner. This is actually important, I think, once you have the card that can switch power and toughness. You don't want to have it so that your Cherex just dies on the spot. So, many situations, you just want to switch the power and toughness. And we don't want to be punished for doing that. And a lot of our crabs also just don't have a lot of power. So, giving them plus one power is not really a bad thing. It taps for a blue. Sapphire Medallion to make our blue stuff cheaper. Sky Diamond taps for blue. Soul Ring. And then we have Sword of the Animist. Fantastic card for the deck. We are going to be attacking a lot with our Cherix. So let's get some more islands in there. We can threaten some commander damage. Even better because it does give Cherix plus one power. So if you switch the power and toughness with uh, the one Merfolk that does that, it's not going to kill it with zero toughness. And then we have Wayfarer's Bobble. If you've got to go for ramp in this kind of deck, go for the ramp that gets you lands, which isn't always the easiest to do in mono blue. But we have Burnished Heart, we have Myriad Landscape, we have Wayfarer's Bobble. You know, pretty decent ways of getting more lands. So let's take a look at our crabs. Nothing super special here. We do have Hedron Crab. Let's just put it this way. If it's a crab, it's in the deck. There are only like 25 to choose from anyway. <laughs> and it's more of just a janky fun thing to play just to say you have Crab Tribal. It's one of the tribals I don't think people were expecting, so Hedron Crab going to give you some mill potential. And then we have Ruined Crab, which is a better version, because instead of just targeting one player to mill three cards, it's each opponent. And then we have Iceberg Cancrix. This is the one that's important to have snow permanents for, so whenever you play a snow land, you may have a target player put the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Not super powerful, I know, but why not? <laughs> you know, why not do that? Metallic Mimic. The benefit I would say about playing Tribal versus just going for pure Voltron is that there are easier ways of giving your Cherex more power. 
so that if you do the trick where you switch power and toughness, you're not screwed. We have Purple Crystal Crab. When it dies, you get to draw a card. We have Adaptive Automaton, kind of the same idea as with Metallic Mimic, just more power and toughness for your crabs. As you can see, most of them are low-powered or no-powered at all. We have Ancient Crab, just a 1-5. <laughs> it's, it's that kind of deck. We have Horseshoe Crab. We can pay one blue to untap it, so we can have it block, most likely. If you put equipment on it, you know, paying a blue to untap your creature is not the worst thing in the world, but there aren't any combos. We have Juari Scuttler, just a 2-3. <laughs> Again, that kind of deck. Skittering Crustacean has a monstrosity ability of 4 for 7 mana. As long as it's monstrous, it has Hexproof. So, get 4 counters on it and it becomes Hexproof. Fantastic. We have Crustacean, 1-6 with Flash. So, again, it's pretty much your typical crab creature. We have Fortress Crab. Kind of the same idea, but just a 1-6 for 4. Crustacean's kind of a little bit better than that. We have Oraxid, Protection from Red, 2-3. We have Skitter Eel, a fish crab, but still a crab. You can adapt 2, so pay 3 mana and put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And then we have Thassa's Emissary. This might be one of the better crabs in the deck. Has a Bestow ability of 6. Whenever Thassa's Emissary or Enchanted Creature deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. The Enchanted Creature gets plus 3 plus 3. Bestow, by the way, really underrated ability. I was really sad they didn't bring it back for the second time going to Theros. Then we have Turtle Shell Changeling. This is kind of a trick card. We can pay two mana and switch its power and toughness until end of turn. Not going to mean much because it's not our commander, but it's a trick. It's technically a crab. We have Wish Coin Crab, a 2-5 for 4. <laughs> we have Worm Fang Crab. It's unblockable. If you get something like a Black Blade Reforged, you can deal some serious damage with it. When Wormfang Crab comes into play, an opponent chooses a permanent you control and removes it from the game. Not always good. Situationally, it could be pretty bad. But when it leaves play, you return the removed card to play under its owner's control. So make sure you didn't steal something of theirs. Armored Cancrix, 2-5 five for 5. Chrome Shell Crab. Now this might actually be the best crab aside from Archerix. This and Thassa's Emissary has the morph ability. When you turn it face up, you can exchange control of target creature you control and target creature and opponent controls. So, uh, yeah, pretty good. You can get a better creature than just a crab. <laughs> and then we have Giant Crab. Pay a blue until end of turn. Can't be the target of spells or abilities. So, pretty much Shroud. But we do have some tribal support. I don't want to make it seem like these are going to be terrible. But you add more power and toughness. These could actually be decent creatures to have. High Tide Hermit has Defender, so it's one of the worst ones. But it enters the battlefield. You get four energy counters. You could pay two. And it can attack this turn as though it didn't have Defender. Not one I would recommend if you're playing a regular Cherex stack, not a Crab Tribal one. And then we have King Crab. Put target green creature on top of its owner's library. That's a two mana and tap ability. So one of the better crabs because it actually does something. Although it's not super flexible. We have Vexing Scuttler. Has an emerge cost of seven. So you can pay that and reduce it by the mana cost of a creature you sacrifice. And when you cast Vexing Scuttler, you may return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. One of the more useful crabs in the deck. We have Drown Yard Behemoth, another Eldrazi crab. Has Flash, it's a 5-7 with an emerge cost of 8. It has Hexproof as long as it entered the battlefield this turn. So, not the best, but 5-7, not terrible stats. We do have some draw in here. We have Mystic Remora as well as Ristic Study to kind of do the same thing. Make our opponents pay attacks, and if they don't, we get to draw some cards. We have Ponder and Preordain because we're playing Mono Blue. And for Synergy with Tribes, we have Distant Melody to choose a creature type. We draw a card for each permanent we control of that type. We got uh, about 25 crabs in here. Hopefully we can have at least a few of them out there. We have Kindred Discovery. As it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type. One of the better cards in the deck. Whenever a creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, we draw a card. So it's like a better Coastal Piracy. It's a tribal one. So whenever one enters the battlefield or attacks, we get to draw, which is insane. Definitely what we want when our creatures aren't really anything to write home about. We have a few counterspells in here. It's not a big part of the deck, but we have Counterspell, Fierce Guardianship, and Mystic Confluence. You know, Mystic Confluence can at least double as bounce removal and even draw you some cards. We have a couple auras in here. In addition to our other ways of making Cherix unblockable, we have Aqueous Form. So Enchanted Creature can't be blocked, and whenever it attacks, you get to scry one fantastic for just one blue. It could win you some games. We have Crab Umbra. 
mostly just for the flavor, but it does offer us totem armor. So if Cherex would die to like a board wipe, the totem armor would just fall off. So that's pretty cool. Paying mana to untap it's not always the worst thing in the world. We do have some tribal focused cards and these are really just to benefit off of playing a lot of crabs. Mirror of the Forebears so we can pay a mana and have it become a copy of a target creature we control of the chosen type. That might come into play if we have to deal with Menace and we need a couple blockers. We have Heirloom Blade which is kind of funny when we get into equipments for crabs. We're playing crab tribal so I guess it could hold a sword. <laughs> But another equipment that gives power, so once you do the little switcheroo trick, which we're going to get to here in a second, you at least have some toughness when you do the switch. Whenever an equipped creature dies, you may reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card that shares a creature type with it. You put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom in a random order. For an equip cost of one, this is actually a pretty underrated card. Mistform Warchief, not a crab itself, but you can tap it to have it become a crab. And once it becomes a crab, you get cost reduction for your other crabs. <laughs> So it does help us out a little bit. We have Call to the Kindred. The beginning of our upkeep, we look at the top five cards of our library. If we do, we may put a creature card that shares a creature type with the enchanted creature from among them onto the battlefield, really speeding up a crab deck. So I highly recommend this card if you want to go for crab tribal. We have Door of Destinies. This is one of the best cards in the deck because you are giving all of your crabs plus one plus one for each counter on it. So keep playing those crabs, get more power and toughness. Code of Arms, kind of the same idea, although it's dependent on how many crabs you have. So if you have three or four, I would say you're doing pretty well. Obelisk of Erd to give a plus two plus two anthem to all of our crabs. We have some unblockable cards really just to synergize with making our Cherex unblockable Trailblazer's Boots. Has a non-basic land walk, which guess what? I can almost guarantee you each opponent you play against is going to have at least one non-basic land. Merfolk Thaumaturgist. This is the card I was talking about. You can tap it to switch target creatures, power and toughness until end of turn. I think this is what Stephen Green used when he played it. He was playing Cherex in that one episode. Really sweet card. I mean... It's something you can reuse each turn if you can make Cherex unblockable. Chances are, if you have like another equipment, you're going to deal commander damage. And then we have Thassa God of the Sea. We get an upkeep scry, which is cool, but who really cares? We can pay two mana target creature we control can't be blocked this turn, which is the really important part. We have Traveler's Cloak. It draws us a card when it enters the battlefield. But we choose a land type, and the enchanted creature has Island Walk of the Chosen type, so this can be a pretty powerful card. We have Wonder, so to deal with all the flyers, we don't really have any. This is pretty much the only one, so once it's in our graveyard, we have nothing but islands. It's going to give all our creatures flying, which is fantastic. We do have some equipment cards in here to help us out even more. We have Shadow Spear, which is fantastic if you can switch the power and toughness, or you can use its ability. This is just one of the best equipments to ever come out. It just does way too much. It's almost like another Skull Clamp situation where, for the mana that you pay, it just does way more than it should. You know, plus one, plus one, Trample and Lifelink. That's already pretty good if you pay one to play it, two to equip. But having an activated ability where you pretty much remove Hexproof and Indestructible from all of your opponent's permanents, like all of them, that is insane. Blackblade Reforged, probably a must-have in any Voltron deck now. Only three to equip it to Cherex, seven to every other creature, but it gets plus and plus one for each land we control, which is on theme with the deck. We want to get a bunch of islands. We, of course, have Lightning Greaves because, you know, why not protect our commander? It's pretty important for our strategy. And Hammer of Nazan, plus two power and indestructible. Definitely one of the better equipments that I would recommend because as soon as you play it, you can just attach it to Cherex or whatever other creature you want to make plus two power and indestructible. And we do have a couple removal spells here. We have Engulf the Shore and Whelming Wave. I think both of these are pretty good considering that our Cherex is going to have insanely high toughness. I don't think it's ever going to be bounced back to our hand. Engulf the Shore is likely going to remove every other creature, bounce it back to their owner's hands. That way we can just do the old switcheroo and deal some commander damage. And then Whelming Wave because Cherex isn't just a crab, it is a Leviathan Crab. So you bounce all other creatures that aren't of those four or five creature types. And you should be able to swing in uncontested. So anyway guys, let me know what you think about the Cherex Crab Tribal Deck Tech. 
think it's a pretty interesting option here. <laughs> Definitely one of the more bizarre decks you could build from Zendikar Rising. And that's even including the whole party mechanic and how weird those decks are. But anyway, you all have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next time.